Hello everybody. So this video is about INICT psychiatry questions discussion. There were six questions this year in recent INICT exam. I will try to discuss them one by one, the recall based question with answers and explanations. Although most of them are simple and self explanatory, but let's understand. A female patient with a previous history of mania one year back now presented with an episode of hypomania. Now she is pregnant. These are the following drugs to be avoided for being highly teratogenic. You know, teratogenic is this also, this also, this also, and somewhat this also. It is relatively safest. But out of all the three teratogenicity, lithium is famous to call Epstein. Epstein anomaly. Valproate causes NTD and oxcarbamazepine also causes NTD. But many students have marked this as lithium because there were more famous MCQs on lithium teratogenicity. But technically, valproate is more teratogenic than lithium. Lithium causes Epstein anomalies, atrialization of right ventricle. Valproate causes neural tube defect, anencephaly. Moreover, the prevalence data states different things. Uh, so this is a chart. Uh, actually, although this topic is from psychopharmacology lecture on the eMedicos app, there's a separate lecture uploaded, psychopharmacology by myself, in which I have spoken that valproate is more teratogenic. And here is the chart from Kaplan Sadok, table number 27.9. Can you see? Valproate is category X. Lithium is category D. So very straightforwardly mentioned that Valproate is more teratogenic than lithium. Although uh, in our concept book psychiatry, page 198, there is a separate chapter on uh, drugs in our concept book, teratogenicity of valproate is mentioned, neural tube defect 1 to 4 percent. 1 to 4 percent is a de decent data. Uh, there is a question in DQB in which the explanation states that lithium may cause cardiovascular in 1 in 2000 as a uh, valproate causes 1 to 2 percent. A similar question is there in the recently released Psychiatric Q-Bank also 4.0 in which it is mentioned that lithium causes 1 in 2000 and valproate 1 to 2 percent. So very straightforward valproate is more teratogenic than lithium hence the answer of this question is valproate okay. This is an easy question which are the morning is most commonly seen in female almost every student has done it correct. Red syndrome, X-linked dominant, mainly affect females. MECP2 gene mutation, male dies in utero most of the times. Whatever the other option may be, some students were saying selective mutism was the option, some students were saying Asperger was not, Heller was there. It doesn't matter, the answer has to be red syndrome. The students have mentioned that there are two questions on red syndrome. I have only included here one because in the other question, the question was which of the following is X-linked dominant and the other option were Duchenne muscular dystrophy, spinal muscular atrophy, so DMD, SMA, so I am not including that in psychiatry question. I am aware there were two questions on red syndrome, so if you are planning to comment that so there were two questions on red syndrome, I am aware. One of the questions I have included in psychiatry, another one for other subjects. Alright. So most commonly seen in this. A very very famous question covered in almost every class, every uh, book. So this is your concept book page 127 chapter 7 red syndrome females only. The same is in psychiatry Q-Bank recently released red syndrome, X-link dominant, degenerative affect only females. It's an important topic. I believe you all should know everything about red syndrome like seizures happen, okay, then spasticity, cerebral atrophy, spasticity, okay, then hand wringing moments. It is also in the explanations of DQB. Next question. Now this question some students were saying a patient of schizophrenia was given. Some students were saying symptoms were given. Persecuted delusion, third person auditory hallucination. Irrespective of that the patient was given respect on eyes rolling upward or upward gaze palsy whatever you call it. Some students were saying eyes rolling upward or upward gaze palsy. It was a very famous question. Actually it is a repeat question. A similar question has been asked previously names as well. 
so the condition is dystonia acute muscular dystonia and the drug of choice is injection promethazine a very famous psychiatric emergency condition for patients who are on antipsychotic after antipsychotic upper rolling of eyeball bending of neck to one side torticollis oculogyric crisis dystonia dystonia the treatment is injection phenargan iv 25 mg iv promethazine some students have marked it as lorazepam considering it as catatonia i don't know how did you think about catatonia reassurance there is no concept and it is not an epilepsy where you will give phenytoin in the textbook concept book i always tell students to mark the most important chart in chapter number 10 extra pyramidal symptom page number 185 chapter 10 you can open your book and see oculogyric crisis acute muscular dystonia treatment injection promethazine a straightforward question you can check in your dqb dams question bank chapter number 3 question number 32 a very similar question a very similar question this topic is there in psychopharmacology lecture on the e medical that this was the question in the DQB. I have also included it in the recent psychiatry Q bank. Although it is a little different on antipsychotics, wasting of neck muscle, protrusion of tongue, but the options were quite similar and the answer was same. IV promethazine. It's very important to do repeat questions. This is a repeat question of AIMS. This time three out of six in INI CT are repeat questions. Three out of six. It's a significant number. Or you can say indirect repeats 4 out of 6. Now this was the only challenging question of this INI CT psychiatry because it is more of data based. More of data based. Uh, last year they asked in INI CT OCD prevalence. This year they are focusing on your uh, bipolar prevalence. Schizophrenia prevalence students know 1% but very few students know that bipolar prevalence is also 1%. Bipolar 1 is one of the very few disorder which is uh, having equal prevalence in males and female. Let me tell you, most of the psychiatric disorder female more than male. Male more than female is known for autism, Asperger, conduct disorder, antisocial personality disorder and then female is equal to male is known for schizophrenia BPAD1 bipolar 1 in fact bipolar 2 female more than male but BPAD1 female is equal to male most of the psychiatric disorder female a few male and a few equal can you note it down please Then this was a little controversial, these two statements. So I was searching for numerous references. That's why I took two more days to come up with an explanation. Uh, today, I, it's like I and I was conducted on 8th and I'm releasing this video today because I was more confused about second and third. So I have taken help of my resident students who are reading textbooks. Uh, so there are few resident students who have helped me find out the correct answer. And now I'm quoting the correct answer as C. So here is the reference. First of all, one of these is mentioned in the concept book. Bipolar 1 has equal prevalence in men and women. Bipolar 1. Only one of the four options. Okay, option A is true. It is also mentioned in a comprehensive textbook of psychiatry. Gender ratio in bipolar all subtype combined is 1 is to 1. However, bipolar 2 women is overrepresented. So this is your, our snapshots taken from comprehensive textbook of psychiatry 10th edition which states that prevalence of bipolar is about 1% prevalence of bipolar is about 1% the age of onset is most commonly 20 years of age so age of onset is most commonly is not 35 to 40s it is 20s so bipolar have earlier onset that's why we are giving C as the answer and suicide rate percentage is a little confusing in different books so this is CTP 25 to 50 percent patients will attempt suicide and 8 to 9 percent will complete suicide so 5 to 15 is a closer option to 8 to 9 
then i tried to further check it through oxford textbook of psychiatry otp so the lifetime prevalence of this disorder is 1 person 0.3 to 1.5 person 1 person and the prevalence in male and female is similar okay so this is also confirmed from otp and i have also checked one nature journal so 15 to 20 percent of suicide are lethal one half of them attempt suicide then uh, mean age of onset 17 to 30 years not 30 to 40 so coming back to the question i have references in support of b c b a and d hence the answer is c most common age group is a little earlier there is a similar question in dqb psychiatry chapter 3 question number 58 All of the following are true about bipolar disorder. Prevalence is more among female. No prevalence is equal. Lifetime prevalence is around one percent. Mean age twenty one years. This is a true statement. Mean age is twenty one years is a true statement. So there is a similar question that explains three out of four choices. The only thing which I haven't covered and which I haven't taught is suicide rate in bipolar. I know suicide rate in depression is ten to fifteen percent. Suicide rate in bipolar completed five to fifteen percent. Same question, psychiatry Q band. Then the fifth question, a very easy one: alcohol intake, liver cirrhosis. We all know benzodiazepine is to be given. So which benzodiazepine you will give? So all these are high, and moreover, liver cirrhosis mentioned. So you will give a benzodiazepine that love liver. Love liver is lorazepam and oxazepam. these are liver friendly benzodiazepine a very simple question actually there is a similar question asked in pgi exam earlier that's why i said repeat questions are very important for ini ct chlorazepoxide and diazepam undergo double oxidation and glucuronilation so they are liver unsafe and lorazepam and ox oxazepam undergo only hepatic glucuronilation so oxidation is a problem in liver disease that's why it is mentioned in a patient with deranged lft Lorazepam and oxazepam are safe, and chlorazepoxin and diazepam are not safe. Last question. It's a repeat question. So they clearly mention it's a we Google image they have picked up. EOG was positive, electroocular was positive, and EEG is fast. Obviously, if eye movement is positive, then answer has to be REM sleep. It's the exact same repeat question from Ames, November 2017. It's there in concept book. It's there in DQB. It's there in the sleep lecture. It's there in psychiatry Q bank as well. Same repeat image, absolutely same. The answer is REM because we know that EOG is positive in REM and EEG is fast. So that's all about the psychiatry questions. I hope it helped you. Okay, so I have compiled this PDF and shared it on numerous platforms as well. If you have any queries or feedback about this video or PDF, please get back to me at psychicqueries at gmail dot com. Thank you very much.